What's up, y'all? It's your boy Al. Happy Friday. Um, wanted to get at y'all about this. Uh, this thing I saw, maybe you've seen it too. Um, it's an article and a news story that speaks to something that I've said, I've preached about, I've spoken about, I believe, um, for years now. And it's in reference to and proof that, more proof that women were lied to and lied to each other in terms of not needing men, particularly in raising the children. I've always said that one of the reasons why for the past few generations, beginning with my generation, which I'm a Gen Xer, born in 1977, one of the reasons why uh, the children who are going to be young adults, who are going to be adults, who are not having children, um, who are going to be teenagers, uh, have had such a hard time with these kids. Uh, one of the reasons why society's had such a hard time with these kids uh, is because these kids have grown up without fathers or without father figures or without male figures, positive male figures in their lives. And one of the thing, one of the reasons why that is, number one, let's start with square one. I always start with us men. We drop the ball in several areas of our lives and involved with our children. But also we've had some assistance. The welfare system that left women to be able to choose between a man and a check. The war on drugs which left men in prison today, still in prison for things right now that are being sold in stores at dispensary, just like candy. They're talking about things like marijuana. Um, and over the years, those two things and a combination of things, um, women, particularly black women, have been left to feel they don't need a man to raise a child. Uh, they don't need a man particularly to raise a man child. And what we've seen over the past few generations are young boys and girls, particularly boys, who've grown up to be almost, uh, I don't want to say it, but I, I can't for the lack of a better term, savages in some in some realm. We have young boys that are, that are taken to gangs like it's the 1980s all over again. Uh, we have young girls who are losing their identity. And while, again, there have been some things that have happened in our society that have, for men that have caused men to step away. And let me just say that brothers, men, there's never a reason for you to step away from being a father to your child. But we know we've had deadbeat dads. We've had men knocking up girls and leaving them and raising children by themselves in those situations. But there have been other situations where that's not the case. And women, if, if, and women have felt that they could raise a child without a man. We have this society in this society now we have women that will go off desire a child not a man but a child get knocked up go to sperm bank whatever get a child um and and just raise that child and they don't think they don't need a child a man a husband because society tells them and they tell particularly our women um that you don't need a man to raise a child you go to stores you see products for babies um where the families advertise for white couples is advertised as a husband and wife with when black women on the cover it's just women with no men um, and I think that these perpetual messages are out there trying to show and prove and push the message and the image to our women that they don't need a man to raise a child. And we've seen the results of that. We've seen generation after generation of lost children, lost boys, boys just flooding the prison system, um, boys not knowing how to be men, um, going through all types of, of issues. And I believe that it's largely because of the lack of men, the lack of a male presence, the lack of a, a father figure in particular um, in the household uh, of many homes over the past few generations. I, I, like I said, I always speak from a biblical perspective. And from a biblical perspective, we must understand that the man is the disciplinarian. Um, and when that disciplinarian is out of the home, there'll be no discipline, not in the way that it should. Um, I said in previous videos that every scripture biblically that talks about disciplining the child is directed to the father, not the mother. Now, yes, I know over the years, for generations, women have had to take on that role of being not just the nurturer, but the disciplinarian. I know many of women, her grandmother, you know, be strict, whoop that butt, mama whoop that butt, no man in the house. And they did that. They, they did that role. But ask yourself, how much did that take out of her having to perform the role um, that was given to a man uh, to be the disciplinarian? How much did that take out of her? How much did that change her 
How much anger, did, how much resentment did she have? Because she had to perform in those roles that were made meant to perform uh, by a man. And women have been fooled for years. Black women particularly have been fooled into believing that they don't need a man. And what we produce is a bunch of fatherless, angry, resentful children who, because they are missing that, 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 that angle from that father, because they are missing what they need, that, that, that nurturing, um, that discipline from the father, they, they've grown up to be out of alignment out of alignment with God, out of alignment with their mother, obviously out of alignment with their father. We have a lot of out of alignment children. One of the things that I've seen, I saw you here recently, which goes to prove how much men are needed, um, was an article in, in a news story about dads on duty um, in Louisiana. That was a high school in Louisiana that was having all kinds of issues in the school, crime around the school. And about 40 or so dads got together and, and formed this legion called uh, Alliance called Dads on Duty. And they, as 40 men, uh, black men, decided to go into the school and they decided to get this school together. 40 dads. No, no um, teaching degrees, no teaching certificates, no formal training of any kind. But they don't need the formal training because they are designed by God to be the disciplinarians that they are. And they went into this school. And let me tell you, this school turned around. Crime, mischief almost disappeared. Um, the kids were explaining how they feel safe. The young boys, the young girls were thanking the dads for coming in and doing what they've done to turn this school around. And here is a group of men that in a school probably predominantly run um, by women. Um, and, and I think that's another thing that we that 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 women were fooled in is particularly in our, our particular sector of the education system. Um, get all the men out because they are, you know, they may touch the children and they may do this. And, yeah, we know that they've had there been some issues with men, but not all men uh, uh, are bad. I think one of the great mistakes is getting rid of the men in the school system because the men have always served as the disciplinarians. I can remember going to Holland Heights or going to MC Williams Middle School, having those coaches, you know, Coach Tanksley, Coach Harrison, um, having those coaches that when, when you know, Miss So-and-so can get you together, send you over to old coach and he'll get you right together. You know, those men, that, that those strong men that were there to, to you know, um, my assistant principal um, who recently passed, um, going home to be with the Lord, his name escapes me right now, but he, he just, just passed away not too long ago. Um, he, he was one that'll get you together. And we had these men that were there. Women teach, we had these men that were there. Um, I think of Mr. James Carey at Yates. Some of other coaches we had at Yates. Um, Coach Harris at, at Yates and all these other coaches we had. Coach Johnson and all these other coaches uh, we had at Yates that would get us together. Um, that were there to provide the discipline. Um, and I think that over the years, we've sort of made the, the school system a, a place where all women have to deal with these kids with no male presence, no real dominant male presence. And the, key, the, the school system has suffered, not just because women can't hold kids like that. You're not designed to, but also because women or natural um pacifist in that in that area where you always oh you know let let the kids make it they'll be okay even i even deal with them, my wife my son he does some things she's like oh leave him alone. i'm like no i'm not leaving him alone he needs to get this done he needs to eat that food he needs to do this he needs to go sit down because i said so um so, so women are natural just pacifists in that in that area and 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 have you look at the school systems over the years with five kids and it's been a very pacifist you know, let the kids alone. The, you know, the kids are this, the kids, they're just kids. And there's been no real male presence to just come in and say, hey, you know, do, this is what needs to get done. These men have come in and they've, they've, they've gotten things done. And this just shows, um, this is just one instance that shows the, the necessity of male presence in the lives of kids, um, black or white, but particularly in this case, black kids. These men, these men came in, 
And of course, it's probably going to be a little pushback. But when a strong man stands up in the face of a kid, that child going to get in line quickly. Um, but these brothers, they came in, they weren't playing, um, and they've gotten this school turned around. And I just wanted this to serve as a notice that for women, if that man is trying to be that presence in that child's life, you need that. That child needs that. That child needs that disciplinarian. That child needs that man. That that even in my household, my wife and I, there's a difference. When my wife tells my son to do something, she may have to tell him four or five times. But when my voice comes forward, my son immediately stops. He knows that presence, that father, that, that discipline, that, that godly discipline that, that, that God ordained and endorsed in me comes out in my son brings it to a halt or whenever my wife's trying to get him to stop doing something and I come in and I'm like hey what did your mama say it immediately comes to a stop because that's the role God made for us and for women who are trying to and choosing to raise your child without your man you're robbing yourself and your child you're putting too much on yourself and it's going to affect you mentally it's going to affect you socially it's going to affect you emotionally and you you're robbing your child of that discipline that they need from that father. Let me let me tell you something. One thing that I know as you get older as a man, I don't know about about young girls, but as, young women, but as a man, you you're thankful as you grow older for that discipline from your father. My father was a whoo. Uh, even my friends talk about man, your dad used to be on you, boy. He was even scared of him. Um, and and as a as a man now, I thank God for that. And my friends, I look at my friends, my friends, they tell me, and now that we're in our 40s, some of them, they tell me, man, I wish I, I wish I would have had that. I, my life would have maybe gone a different direction if I'd have had somebody like your pops all in my face, in my ear, making sure um, that um, I stayed on the straight and narrow. And for me and my father, it wasn't just straight discipline because my father, he spent more time hugging me and telling me he loved me than he did disciplining. But when the discipline came, it came swift. Um, but it wasn't just they all disciplined. It was bad. It was fair and balanced. That was the love and that was the discipline. That was, I'm daddy proud of you. My son, my firstborn son, I love you. You know, you're my everything. You know, and then when they needed to, he, you know, get the belt. You know, it, it was a balance. Uh, and I think a, a good godly father knows how to have that balance. Um, but I, I do believe that when I look at things like this, it just points out and it shows how women were lied to. Women were lied to in our homes, women were lied to in our school systems, that we need less male presence. And that's not the case because look at what 40 brothers have gotten together and done. And I believe uh, two things. I believe that they were organized and they got with the school system and the school system has seen what's going on. And this school, hey, listen, these, these sisters who run this school, the people running school, they they ain't giving these brothers no pushback because they see. And my wife is a teacher, and I think it's taken, you know, for a long time. Women, you know, in the education system, you know, didn't see it. Some did, but didn't have any power to do anything about it. But I think these sisters in this school system are like, man, whew, thank goodness. Because these kids, you know, for a long time, these sons, a lot of these sisters in this school probably gave pushback on. I don't need no man. We don't need no men. Here we got it. But after seeing some of these kids... They're like, brothers, come on in. They welcome these brothers with open arms, no pushback. Usually when, you know, years past, brothers try something like this and get a lot of pushback. But with what these people have seen from these kids, especially in the pandemic, these, do, these teachers say, hey, come on, brothers. Please, thank the Lord. I believe that. And I also believe that these brothers, this was a, you cannot tell me and convince me that there was not, uh, these men are not godly men. The, this was a, a, a move. Uh, this was an effort that was started uh, and, and had a lot of prayer involved. Um, and that's why it's being so successful. Um, and I, and I, and I, 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 I let, me, let me piggyback on, on that, being that it was prayer involved and successful. I believe that, that sisters, if you have a man who is trying to be right with God, you need to let that brother in um, to his child's life. Um, and I think also when we look at this, situation when sisters have been coached into believing they have a, they don't need men it's not that you don't need man men it's that you don't need a man who's not trying to be close to god if you have if you have a man that's trying to be close to good to god you need that brother but society has told us that's not a priority anymore you know, women used to ask the first question you get on the date you what church you go to you, know, you go to church you know lord 
couldn't sit down in front of a girl and not answer that question first. It wasn't how much money you make. It wasn't what kind of car you drive. It wasn't what this, it wasn't that. It was, are you saved? That's, I've watched several YouTube videos and channels of things you ask, brother. That's not one of them. Um, and I believe it needs to go back to being question number one. Because when you have a man who's saved and trying to be close to the Lord, you get this kind of thing you got right here where 40 brothers come together and say, hey, we're going to take control of this school um, in Louisiana which ain't, 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 ain't no soft state. You know, these brothers came together in a state. It's not like they in, you know, Connecticut. These brothers in, in the heart of it, they're in Louisiana, and they say, we're going to take charge of this school. Um, so I believe that this serves us and it shows us that brothers are needed. Men are needed in the lives of their children. Sisters, you can't do it by yourself. Women, you can't do it by yourself. You can try and you can even raise them to be successful, but you don't know by the time they're grown what that's going to have taken from you. You don't know what you're going to have lost. You may not even desire want to be with a man anymore. You, you may lose your zeal. You don't know what you're going to lose. I know a lot of mothers and grandmothers who spent years raising their children by themselves. And by the time these children are grown and they're old, they're spent. They're done. They, 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 they've exhausted everything of themselves because they performed in areas that they were not designed to perform in. And so I believe that people should look at this and should be encouraged to let men back in, number one, to their lives, sisters um, who have children, and you may have a strange relationship with the child's father, let that brother back in. If he's trying to do right by you and your child and the Lord, let him back in. And I believe this also is a call to let more men back into the school system, more manly, manly, manly men who can take control and be the natural disciplinarians that God called them to be. So if you like this video, don't forget to click like and subscribe. Uh, don't forget to tell somebody, put it in the comments. If you agree with what I'm saying, let me know. I'll holler back at you. If you don't agree with what I'm saying, let me know. I'll holler back at you. This is your boy Al. Peace.